Hello everybody, welcome back to the Macrocast, your source for news and entertainment with the minds behind Macro Records. Bean Curd. We are your hosts. I'm Download. I'm Madsen. Fueled by ramen. And welcome to another very special episode. Of the Macrocast, your source for news and entertainment. <laughs> no, I already with said the that. No, macro no, no, no. I'm Download. God damn it. That's I'm Madsen. Madsen. All right, let's go. Uh, let's talk a this little macro news. This is my phone. Let's talk a little bit of macro records news. Records news. The track that you're hearing uh, before this podcast is today is curd. called I Wish from One City. It is out today, the same day as this podcast, available exclusively on Beatport. Bean Curd. The digital leader in electronic music. You can get it there. Your source for news and entertainment. <laughs> no, no, no. With the minds behind Beatport. Uh, any other macro news? Uh, don't forget to go to our store, shop.thisismacro.com. You can get shirts. God, that, that one looks terrible. It's falling. I it's wear, seen better days. I have worn the shit out of this shirt, though. Like, yeah. I wear it really frequently. And, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that also it was the way that we're printed. But we're actually almost, we have like three of these shirts left. Really? The tank yeah. tops? Yeah. So. so if you want a tank top... Go to shop.thisismacro.com. It'll show you which sizes are still available. My point is that we're going to make new tanks soon, and I'll make sure that this does not happen with the new tanks. But the, see, that the 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 it's shirt itself a war- is American Apparel. Yeah. We the, got American Apparel shirt, tanks. Yeah, the shirt's really good. And so I mean, it's not the, like... The printing is cool, too. It's kind of got that, like, uh, faded look. Yeah. And it's not going to completely fade away. But, um... I, so, like, our original designs, some of them are still on Gildens, but... We're straying away from that. Like, the American Apparel shirts are much better. I just feel like the Gildan shirts, like, fall apart really easily. Well, know. and they, they fade more than uh, an American Apparel shirt. I, I yeah. think so, too. I, and the way... They just don't... They don't, like, fit as well, either. They're not as comfortable, too. Yeah. So, like, I the mean, fabric is much more comfortable than I, an I think American Apparel shirt. Most... Well, now, we're almost out of those shirts, too. So, most of our shirts now are American Apparel. Yeah. So, don't sweat it. So once again, go to shop.thisismacro.com if you and want to find get, out you'll more. And you'll get some stickers as well with, uh, with your purchase. So let's talk a little bit of music news. Musica. Uh, last, Sunday, last Sunday was the Grammys. Yes. And some, some stuff went down at the Grammys. That's, you know, putting it mildly. Um, Kanye West, almost we almost had a repeat of his incident uh, with Taylor Swift at the MTV yeah, I, the, and Music Video I, I'm not sure if any of you viewers or listeners at home saw the video, but... Um, I was just thinking about how how embarrassed like Beyonce must be when Kanye goes up and does this, you know. Yeah. yeah in, in the video, you can see her going, "No, Kanye, no!" And Jay Z's like, he's shaking his head. Like, oh shit, this <laughs> yeah. fucking asshole. I I don't know. Some people have speculated that Beyon or like, Kanye wants to wants to get with Beyonce. That's why he keeps doing this. <laughs> so you see, uh, okay. Okay, here starts the the gif. Beck hugs Prince. He's about to start his speech. And he's like, "Come back, come back, man. What's the deal? What are you?" Kanye was about to like tell in front of all those people that he doesn't think Beck deserves that award. And he went on later. Uh, he did an interview with his lovely bride Kim Kardashian afterwards, and she's just nodding the whole time. It's it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Kim Kardashian, famous person. Yeah, exactly. I think that I like Beck definitely did deserve that award though. And oh yeah. They, they even had a like a hashtag trending on Twitter, like who is Beck? <laughs> Come on guys. Well it's like it's about, those it's are the these, same these people. Are all kids. Those yeah. are the same people who are like this Missy S- Elliott girl is just riding uh Katy Perry's coattails. <laughs> these people no, they're they're like, oh, I can't believe Katy Perry's giving another artist a break. Yeah. Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott. Who existed long before Katy Perry. Uh, yeah, each song she performed at the Super Bowl was at least five to ten years old. <laughs> yeah, and people were like, Brand this is a brand new track. Yeah, we've never heard of this Missy Elliott before. Cue like the thousand get your freak on remixes. And Beck is such a, a good guy. I, uh, do you got, you want to hear he was a, well. He's I don't know. He's a good sport about it. That's what he was. I get. I mean, I guess you could say that. But he's. This is what is he, he said. also a good guy. I mean, I don't know him. Well, this is just his public statement. So I mean, this is our only frame of reference. But he goes. I was just so excited he was coming up. He deserves to be on stage as much as anybody. Beck said when asked how he felt about Wes crashing the stage, how many great records has he put out in the last five years? Even though he said Beyonce should have won. 
Absolutely, replied the humble musician. I thought she was going to win. Come on, she's I, I, Beyonce. I think that the way that you read that kind of makes it sound weird, but uh, <laughs> well, he's like, he's like, no. I mean, come on. How many good, how many great records has Kanye West put out in the past five years? I think yeah. the way that you read it was like, how many records has he even put out oh. <laughs> in the past five years? No, nah, he, he like was four, dude. He was totally being humble about it. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was a good sport. Beyonce, though, I think is the true good sport here, though, because. Can you imagine, like, she gets called out in front of all of these people, and she just has to, like, smile and go, like, eh. She has to be like, God damn it, she's Kanye. She's like, I'm not shit. Like, thank you guys for supporting me all these years and whatnot. And you she's know? fairly humble about her, you know, her career's going well, and she's fairly humble about it, I, I'd her, say. Oh, her career's going well. <laughs> How She owns, like, sure, she has won, like, 27 Grammys. A lot like of that. Grammys. And that's why people were saying, like, come on, Kanye. This, like, look at how many Grammys these people and yourself have won. And a guy like Beck, who's really a talented musician, he deserved that Grammy. I think so. But I, I, you and I were talking about this the other day, and I mean, how many writers does Beyonce have sitting in on, like, you know? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's something I'm, I'm that sure people, talk most to... people don't consider that, and they just look at these people in the limelight. Oh, he must be right. Exactly. Well, and, and like Beck, I'm sure is not writing uh, an album with a team of ghost producers and ghost writers. With like, a band, his band probably. I mean, yeah, like but, but a those dudes writing the tracks. Exactly, you know? but they're, they're all they're all head. real musicians, and it's really unfair. Well, of Kanye. I, that's not. It, it's not like the other people aren't real musicians. No, as well, but, I, but... I, I'm saying it's unfair of Kanye to say that like true artistry should have won out. I, like, I, yeah, I agree with that also because his music is like hyper produced. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, come on guy. Like, you know, I mean, exactly. I, I, and he was, uh, okay. So on a later, at a later juncture, he was talking about, he was like, no man, I wasn't dissing on Beck. I was talking about the, uh, the, the, like the, the committee, the, voters, yeah. the Grammy committee or whatever. It's like, dude, why don't you have enough power and enough influence? Like, why don't you get up, like stop talking shit and trying to walk up on stage and yeah. like become and trying a to part ruin, of that. ruin that guy's moment. Totally. Like, I mean, that's exactly what he did. Or and, what he's trying to do. Ruin the ruin that guy's. I'm surprised they so, don't have a security guard dedicated to keeping <laughs> Kanye's ass in that seat. Yeah, I'm surprised someone in the pre meetings was not like, all right, so what's the plan if Kanye West tries to come up on stage? All right, they're they're like doing damage control already before yeah. the fact. Um, we gotta they, keep Mr. Wait- West in his seat. You know? They further uh, they went on to ask back. What do you think about Kanye's statements that Beyonce is true artistry and you're not? And Did he, he really say that, though? That Beck is not true artistry? Well, I think this – whatever news source asked him this question kind of, you know, twisted it a little bit to their own means. As news sources are want to do. But Beck went on to say, you can't please everybody, man. I still love him and think he's a genius. I aspire to do what he does. He's a gene. That's that's what Beck said. So just just to put, like – but That's is, the icing like, on top. Is Kanye West really that brilliant, though? I <laughs> no. Feel, like, honestly, I feel like it was, like, it's a huge marketing ploy. Like, they're like, oh, best rapper in the world. Like, it's always been like that. He had, like, the college dropout thing. Oh, yeah, so okay. Dumb. You came from, uh, like, a, an established family, like a wealthy that, family. And college dropout was, like, I feel... It was feel, a good album. I feel like that was his best album. And Well, he's got... I, I'm gonna, like, no bullshit. He's got some great tracks. Mm-hmm. But I don't... I, I, what... Kanye West sees himself as like a god, as, or as like John Lennon or something like that. He, I don't know. I think there was some interview where he was like, "I'm God's gift to music." Or something. well, the Beatles said that too, didn't they? I, I guess. So I think that Kanye West sees himself as that, but he's just an asshole, man. He is. He's a major why do you, asshole. Ah, oh, man. And why can't you just be satisfied that you're like you know Kim Kardashian is your wife? <laughs> he has to go after the other big booty woman. So here's Beyonce. a little another. Um, bit of music news. Diplo got called out on Twitter the other day. Wait, well, I mean, speaking about, about Beyonce, did you see that gif of that Diplo uploaded where he was like, Beyonce, he was at the Grammys and Beyonce uh-huh. was walking by and he was like, Beyonce. And she turned around. She's like, Hey, <laughs> what? no, he was, I haven't seen that. He's like, Beyonce noticed me. That's awesome. So that's, a, I don't know. I wish you would have seen that. It would have been a, a clear, sexy so, segue. <laughs> this chick at Rebecca mock, she tweeted at Diplo she said, Diplo has shared one of my gifts as background art for his music without asking me. My work isn't your clip art, dude. Don't sample my gif. Come on, guy. And then JJ or Steves uh, goes on to say, Why treat another industry's hardworking artists like shit? I mean, support your art. I mean, I support your art. Why can't you be decent to us? So, Diplo. What does that even mean? Diplo at, credited her. At Diplo, who goes by. Wait, hold, sorry. I'm sorry. We have to see. He's this. going by Taylor Spliff now. Yeah. It, well, no, it was Taylor. Sp- 
It was Taylor Spliff when this went down, and now it's at Giflo. <laughs> Giflo. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Okay, so he goes, I credit her. What do you want me to do? Eat her out and massage her boobs and tell her at the same time as well? Like, uh, so and Okay, so the media kind of had a field day with this and said that they were misogynistic comments. And, oh, well, it's not Diplo. the first time Diplo's done this either. But who cares? <laughs> I mean, honestly, Diplo was kind of in the right. Like, if you know, well, it's a gif, first of all. It's not yeah. like this woman is some, like, huge established artist. She could probably use the promo. Yeah. Well, you know? and that's the thing. When I heard it was a gif, I was kind of like, okay, why is she making a big deal over a gif? Because right. it's not like something she painted or hand drawn or even it's some sort of graphic design. It's a gif, and I mean people churn out gifs by the millions every day. Oh yeah, day. totally. But I mean, on top of that as well, like who I've never heard of this woman before, <laughs> Me neither. ever. Yeah. And it's like, it, like, does she have representation, or why does she have to go out to the public and, and handle this in such a like a, a juvenile way? You know, like couldn't she get her manager or someone to contact his people and be like, hey, listen, like. We, we deserve some sort of compensation for this. Yeah, she should have done that. it like through proper channels. But, I mean, Diplo's comment is a little over the top. I agree with him. Like, But he shouldn't, think... he shouldn't have been like, do you want me to eat you out and massage your tits at the same time? <laughs> because, of course, people are going to run with, like, oh, Diplo's, you know, Being spewing misogynist, misogynistic yeah. comments on Twitter. I mean, but that's – doesn't stupidity kind of deserve stupidity? <laughs> Like, don't you think? I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's Some people would argue that two wrongs don't make a right, you know? But, like, I, I think that it's like, come on. I doubt it's going to really hurt his career. There's either. not going to be... No, it's not going to... Yeah. It can't hurt his career because he's he's up there, man. Well, and like, he's done this before. He uh, Who was it? Taylor Swift or something. He was like, uh, you're small ass or something. And he got flamed for that. But that's that's kind of a bigger deal because Taylor Swift is a huge recording artist. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know who the fuck this woman is. And it's like Rebecca someone just, Mock. Hey, you use my stuff. You suck. Like you know, it's yeah. like okay. Well, you should be fucking grateful. And that's basically what he's saying: is I credited you. I could have done less. You know. Yeah. Like there, and and you could still be pissed off, and nothing would happen. What the fuck do you want? I credited your name. Like you got, you're getting a bunch of traffic for that. Honestly, if she didn't have representation before, she probably does now. True. So I mean, stop complaining, woman. I mean, I mean you know, either way, it's probably this was probably settled. He probably sent her a check yeah. for something. I mean. I don't know. So Diplo doesn't care though. He's cool. So some of the Super Bowl aftermath, uh people like to make bets on Super Bowl. Did you see did you see the photo of like Kanye at the Super Bowl with like no. just looking completely uh unhappy? Like, well, that's how he always looks. He let's always, be honest. He always he's looks always unhappy. got like he's he's got that look like like all the joy has been drained from his life. <laughs> But uh, he's sitting up in the box, and there's, like, two fans like this right next to him. Like, yeah. There's another one that's really cringeworthy of uh, Rihanna at the Super Bowl, and some guy, like, snapped a selfie right next to her, and she's wow. like, she's making a weird face. Rihanna? Yeah. She's known to be, like, pretty good with her fans, but too. But it's because this guy totally caught her off guard. Oh. He, like, walked up next to her and was like, bam! And she's like, and she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> was, I don't know. It's It was posted to r slash cringe, and uh, got a pretty good... Wow. It, it made it to the front page. Oh, so, okay. Well, of course, as anything with Rihanna would. I think the Kanye one was on Funny. Yeah. So. Sorry to cut you off about it's okay. the, the no, original it's totally topic. Okay. It's just made me think of it. This, all the photos from the Super Bowl, I feel, you looked know, like you, this. You know that's Chris Pratt on the right. What? Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to talk about, Chris Pratt and Chris Evans, both, you know, uh, Star-Lord and Captain America himself. It, it, they made a. They made that bet. They had a Super wins. Bowl bet. And... Uh, Whoever's team lost had to go dressed up as their character to so a children's hospital. So Chris Pratt hospital. had to go, didn't he? Yeah, he he went. Uh, Chris Evans even joined him. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really cool, man. Yeah. So he went dressed up as Star Lord to a children's hospital. Chris Evans, he just didn't dress up. No, he didn't dress up. He should have though. Don't I, you think, think? I think I think he it's... goes on to do it later or something. It's cool enough that he that he did go out there and do that though. I mean, yeah, that's you got to respect those guys. Come on, that's awesome. And you total like you totally thought that they I don't know like, it was just gonna be one of the guys like winning the bet and out of good faith they're like nah let's both go let's both and, like, go yeah. like make these kids day or they're weak you know yeah <laughs> look at them they're ridiculous some man. people were poking fun at them too like everyone would have loved to see Captain America more than Star Lord oh come on man oh uh, it was it was all in good fun but yeah that that's pretty much it for that story. A heart, uh, a nice heartwarming story. Can you pick up? Can you pull up that photo of Kanye at the Super Bowl? See if you can find it. Let me see. Before we move on to this other crazy bullshit. Right. 
some crazy stuff has been happening lately, man. Yeah. Like, I have no idea. Okay, first of all, I think a lot of this is revolving around Kanye West. A l- you think a lot of this craziness is centered around that? I do think so, yeah. Really? There was, I mean, so so Tommy Sunshine called out Kygo recently. Yeah, he, I didn't want to talk about that, but if you want to like touch on it real I, quick, he, well, he he just went on a rant about how about how that music sucks, and you know I love Tommy, but that was just I felt like that was pretty uncalled for, especially when oh god, I'm not even gonna go further. No, we no, can we can nah. talk. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm I not about like, to start talking shit about. Well, there's no yeah. yeah, there's no need to talk to talk <laughs> trash, you know. But but uh, well, it's not trash when it's kind of the truth, but but. Okay, look, I, I just, I feel like, I feel like you respect all art, man. You yeah. know, I mean that. I feel like that was far more on call for than Diplo using someone else's stuff and crediting them. Like, Especially when Tommy ragging. Sunshine purports to be like this uh, guy with an amazing character, you know? Right. Like, and no- also a tastemaker. Yeah. So, and I mean, I you know, Tom, I, like I'm friends with Tommy, but that's like still. Uh, I like Kygo's music. I'm I like sorry, Kygo's Tom. music as well, and I mean, uh, you know, it's funny because a lot I of people like it more than yours. Uh, well, a lot of, a lot of <laughs> yeah, but like a lot of people in in the Brooklyn Fire and like in that camp, you know, like yeah. Oliver Heldens, even like Ollie was like, dude, Kygo's music is dope. He was one of the most played artists on SoundCloud last year. Tommy was like, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, well, most he, played doesn't mean the best, but. I mean, those plays and all of those favorites mean that people are listening and they're responding, and they they're interacting. It. They must like it, yeah. you know. And I mean, it, what it comes down to is maybe like, like why? I, I don't know. I, I don't. I can't like put my finger on it. But why would you go out and do that, dude? I don't know. From like a friend to a friend, why? I just don't get it. Let's see. Uh, what is this? <laughs> That's just another picture of Kanye not smiling. <laughs> Kanye moping. Wait, are they at like are they like an In and Out or? It it looks oh, like at a diner. A diner, yeah, of some sorts. Wait, is that is that who is he with? Oh, that's the photo right there. That's, the photo. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. He's so Dude, pissed. Look at he's like, oh, I'm so upset. And these kids are like he's having a great time. <laughs> he's man, that guy needs to smile a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on man. guys this is this is gold what is, uh, let's see what does this tweet say uh kim and kanye, kanye at super bowl that's all it says oh uh, at least he's kind of like posing for that one it's kind of, they're they're cool i think that kim kind of brings out the best in him i really do oh god that's which is kind of like it's kind of a fucked up thing to say but look she's like she's like making him like interact and smile and stuff you know? i guess yeah I just feel like so many people are losing their sanity these days. <laughs> and I don't know if that's the case with this upcoming topic well, or what the fuck was going but on. But I mean, look at okay, look at Kim Kardashian's family. Like that's just that's just pure insanity. And and look at what they've done to Bruce Jenner, man. Olympic gold medalist have and they've they done, turned him into a woman. Wait, 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 wait. Have they done that to him or has is, I've has seen I've seen clips from life? that TV show, man, and like was he a manly dude? Yeah, and the like the wife always kind of like treated him like shit, you know. And so, and I mean, that's just bizarre. That's just yeah. really bizarre. I don't know. I, I can't maybe she knew. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm it's not his gonna, decision, man. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. And I mean, I, I I'm not gonna claim I have the inside scoop as by far any as means. that goes, you know. Yeah. But uh, I, I, as far as as far as this topic goes, what what do you think the deal was with uh, the national anthem sung by this police officer? Like this was in Chattanooga, I believe, Tennessee. Yes. Yeah. Where's the volume? Let's let's bring it back. You want to pause it, bring it back. That way we can our viewers can hear it. I don't. I don't want to. We, you have to hear the like the whole thing, man. It gets really good. Yeah. Here, hold on one second. Let me let me just fix this volume. Let me check your audio settings. Well, you perhaps. know what it is is when we were playing a certain game. Oh, we've been playing Final Fantasy VII. We're we'll gonna, talk about that in a bit. We're going to talk about it when we get to the video game stuff. I'm really excited to talk. about I had about to switch that up bit. some settings so we could play that. Here we go. If you're watching, watch for the cutaways. What? <laughs> Dude, he's not... The, the thing is... <laughs> this is not the national anthem. No. It's an abomination. Like, this, this cop is, like, trying so hard not to laugh. I love that. <laughs> Oh, 
that the stars were still there. He okay. He just totally cut off like an entire part. The home of the free. No one even clapped. The land of the free and the home of the free. Like, dude. He f- I, totally fucked up we, our national anthem. look at some of the comments, man? Because I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what was going on with this guy. Was he on drugs? Is he, like, if, is he disabled or something? I mean, I, I don't mean for this to be insensitive, but why would they get him to sing the national anthem? You know what I'm saying? Like, it just makes no sense to me. It's a. Uh, I thought that he was deaf in the very beginning, but he keeps getting the words wrong too. Yeah. And his meter is like way off, and it just makes me feel like he's never heard. It's like a guy who can't sing that's never heard the national anthem before in his life. Exactly. Well, and I don't know. There's not a lot of good comments here. There's really, you know. People are like nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he really did. Yeah. It could oh, it could definitely go on slash r slash nailed it. I, I think that that's where I <laughs> I found it in the first place. Oh yeah. I don't know, but um, it was there. Or well, it's on a fair, funny. Probably on funny because a slash r slash nailed it is not active. Very, not very active. Really? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, um, it's mildly active. I but wh- what do you what do you think was the situation there? Like, how could that? How does that happen? So I mean, why would they even let him do the national anthem if they knew that something was wrong with this guy? <laughs> I saw one person say maybe there was supposed to be another singer, and then for some reason they didn't show up, and they just said, "Can you do it?" And he was like, "Okay, I can do it," and went up there. And then they realized, like, "Oh shit, this guy doesn't know the national anthem." Wait, but I mean, like, didn't he have a paper in front of him where he was like sing- singing it off of or reading it off of? Or, like, I don't know. I don't. But, and he's but okay. Here's the other thing that's like fucking mind boggling for me. He's a police. The guy's officer. a police officer. He carries a gun. <laughs> and well, he claims to uphold the law, and he can't even sing our own national anthem. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I think that we should have some like there should be some sort of answers from that police department as to why. Well, he obviously shouldn't be a police officer. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, if you don't know the national freaking national anthem, anthem, anthem to our you own need, country, I think I think you need. I don't. I can't say that he shouldn't be a police officer because who knows? The guy's probably he could be like brave for days. He should reapply for citizenship. He, what, what he exactly? <laughs> what he should do is he should be given the test to be a police officer again with with some like basic American knowledge. Yeah. To be a police officer in any country, I feel like you should know a little bit about the country that you're serving. You have to know the laws at least. If he doesn't know the national anthem, how does he know the laws? You can't tell me that he does. Yeah. Well, I, I I think I think that's a big problem with a lot of pol- a lo- most of the police, and I I don't want to say all the police because it's it's unfair. And there I've, are certainly some great police officers that yeah. are doing their job and upholding the law out yeah. there. You know, but exactly. yeah, I agree but, with you. I do. But I agree. I, I'm seventy five percent in my eyes, if not more, don't, and they're like. You know, I mean, it, I, that's a that's a bizarre statistic. I don't know. It could be. I would say fifty percent. Okay. I like. Uh, I don't, maybe that's generous. That's I'm be, and I am being generous there. Yeah. But you know, you got to respect those people that go out there and they're public servants. You well, know. yeah. So. I'm not. And I'm, I'm not really. You know, if I get pulled over by a cop, I'm not going to try and be starting a problem with no, him. I'll just let him do not. his job. Yeah, and... well, I mean, and you, you, that's the thing. Like, you realize that as you get older. You don't want to give the cop shit. Just, he's just trying to do his job, and the more attitude you give him, it's giving him a harder day. Well, and, and it her, just rather. it incentivizes him to make your sh- life worse. Right. Yeah. So I had an experience with police recently. Um, it, it, it was like a crosshair, basically. I told you about this. Yeah. I was uh, driving. I was going to go get some food, and, and this cop pulls up right – like, or actually, he was going – the other way, like coming head on towards me, turns around right behind me, and I was like, "Fuck, I, this has happened all too like, this is all too familiar. It's happened to me before. I've had a cop turn around like that, and when they're behind you, when they turn around like that, they bust like they bust a one eighty right around like yeah. you know they're gonna pull you over. Yeah, and he's like right behind or you me. Th- you think you're." You're certain within yourself that you're about to get pulled over. I knew that he was going to pull me over. Yeah. I knew it. I know, I know like, what you're talking he was about. Because like, he was riding my ass, and like you said, he was probably <clears throat> checking my license plate or something, but yeah. he was right on me. And I, he had – I swear he had the option to go into the other lane. But uh, I, I just – I kept driving, and I was like going the speed limit, like really being – like taking care to make sure I didn't break any laws or whatever because I didn't think that I did. Uh-huh. And uh, I was like, okay, okay. He's like really riding my ass, so I'm going to pull over to the right so I can – 
Because I don't know if he was going to get me to, like, pull over into a street to the left or what. I was like, if anything, I'm just going to pull over before he fucking turns his lights on and make it easy for the guy. Yeah. Like, you know? So I get over to the right, and, uh, and I, like, I get the, my street to turn is coming up anyway. So I turn over, and the cop just, like, zooms by, like, 90 miles an hour and pulls over a guy that was, like, a football field ahead of me. You so know I what pisses me off, what the fuck is even too. going on? I wasn't even, like, there's room bullshit. to go. And, you know, cops will do that. They'll tailgate you just because they can. And they're like, get the fuck out of this lane, you know? But they won't say anything. They'll just tailgate you. Which, tailgating in and of itself is illegal. Like, you don't, you don't need to... As a cop, you don't need to be encouraging that or doing right, it yourself. Absolutely not. Because it makes drivers nervous. And then... They wonder why they pull people over and they're so nervous. It's because, well, dude, you were tailgating me for two fucking miles. Like, right. what the hell? And also, uh, it's, I, I mean, that makes people more accident prone as well. You're putting yeah. other people's lives in danger. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Like, someone could be, could be cruising up at 45 miles per hour and you're getting nervous because he's tailgating you. So you make a turn, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, and someone like crashes into you. Yeah. And next thing you know, someone's dead or someone's hurt. Yeah. You know, screw that noise. Um, but I, yeah, so I, I had no idea why that, why that kind of shit happens or, yeah. uh, anyway, I'm sorry. I, that was an So since we're uh, on the subject of police, these great United States oh. of America, America, let's talk about this. Um, so in this picture, Oh no, dude, this is like, this is like, <laughs> Oh no. So, okay. Wait, wait. For Obama's 50th birthday, Michael Jordan signed a poster for him and, uh, the funniest part about this is that Michael Jordan spelled our president's name wrong. How did he spell it? B A R R A C K. There's only one R in Barack. Oh, well, that's not really that bad. Like the president gave away the poster. What? And when asked about it, he was like, "He spelled my name wrong. I can't put this up in my house." So yeah, that's kind of a dick move, dude. <laughs> that the president gave it away. Yeah, I mean that's a still that's still a signed poster by Barack o or by uh, Michael Jordan, which might make it and since it's spelled wrong it might make it worth even more money yeah like i don't i mean not that he would sell it but i mean that it would be worthwhile to hold on to something like that it makes it even more memorable like look at this look at what i've got here because mike like one the of greatest the, basketball dude, player of michael all time spelled the president's jordan. name wrong michael jordan dude <laughs> like space jam himself mr fucking space jam and by the way did you watch the dunk competition the other night uh, the you mean the NBA All Star Game? That, well, there was a well, dunk. It's the, dunk the slam competition dunk competition. There. Yeah, it was pretty insane. This that guy did awesome. This guy did a Space Jam dunk. Got all tens, like nice. all around, and we were like, "Oh, Power Jam, dude!" He fucking locked that, that in. Uh, me and my brother, when we used to play NBA Live, I think it was like NBA Live 2009. I want to say was like one of the best ones, and it had uh, the integral part of it was like the all-star competition, and you could do the dunk competition as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we used to play that shit all the time, but uh, I've always watched the NBA all-star game too. It's like one of the best parts of that the basketball That was last season. night. It'll be two nights ago for those of you listening on Monday. Yeah. But um, So let me that, ask you wait, this wait, wait, real wait. quick. Go, okay, go, go ahead. I was going to say something on this topic. I, this is on this topic as well. So if Michael Jordan gave you a poster and he spelled your name wrong, would you keep it? Yeah, totally. Yeah, me too. I definitely would. Dude, it's one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Like, everyone wants to be like Mike. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I've got mad respect I wanna for that, dude. want to be like Mike. One of, the, one of the greatest basketball players and worst <laughs> baseball players of all time. Yeah. Um, but this reminds me of, I don't know if you remember, John Travolta on, I think it was the Oscars. He, he called out Adina Menzel. You know, you know who Adina Menzel yeah. is. He called her out as Adele Nazim. Oh, yeah. You Didn't we that? talk about this on the podcast? Uh, this is like a, probably about a year ago. Oh, okay. or over, yeah, I think we did talk about it on the podcast. Well, the about podcast a isn't a year old yet. It's going to be a year old in a couple of weeks. Wow. Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure we did talk about this, though. Okay. I but think we he, talked about later, though. He goes, and the Oscar goes to Adele Nazim. <laughs> and people were like, what? what? Who the fuck is that? How did, how did he even have like a... a I don't know. Did no, Adele marry someone with the last name Nazim? It's just a burst of uh of what what what's what is it called? Dyslexia, I guess. Yeah, you could say that. I I, I think that that's what he like how he justified it by saying that he was dyslexic or something. Oh really? Like I don't remember. I, um, Henry. Maybe Winkler, I just come up with things. Henry Winkler was dyslexic for a long time. Was even, he really? Even on the set of Happy Days, he couldn't read a script sometimes. And so how did he do it? Did they just read the lines to him and he had to like well, spit them back or I, what? Well, he. Uh, he had very few lines on Happy Days, but he was an integral character to it. He was the Fonz. Was, hey! hey! The Fonz. But uh, they were, that's now he's why. doing work to uh, help children identify their dyslexia earlier and get it taken care of. That's solid. Yeah. Uh, you and I 
Well, we're not in. This is kind of like real world news, but it's oh, kind of well, TV it's good news to get well. it out of the way now. Uh, I, I don't know if you have this as a topic already, though. But Stephen Amell being a real life hero. Oh no! I just I I looked at that. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Like yeah. all all of the who plays Diggle? What's that guy's name? Do you remember? You're really good with <sighs> names. That's why I'm asking you. Well, John Barrowman, uh-huh. Stephen Amell, and uh, I'll let's get his name. I dude, as soon as you say it, I'm gonna be like, I knew that. I knew that. Here, hold up. Come on. Oh, I looked up. Okay, hold up. I just looked up John Diggle and. Uh, you you looked up John Diggle on IMDb. That's gonna yield no results. No, well, oh, I shouldn't. Have, yeah, I should have done John Diggle on IMDb. Let's see who. Wait, let's see who can get to this first because you're taking way too long. My phone is going really slow. Okay, so the actor who plays John Diggle in the CW TV show Arrow is David Ramsey. Yes. God damn it. <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> David Ram- Well, I love how you were like building this up too. It's the he is <laughs> just wait. He's name it David Ramsey. Yeah. Fuck. David Ramsey. He's But he's they were awesome all really too. cool with that that woman. So apparently what happened is uh this woman lost her her uh child at at childbirth. Mm-hmm. And um they she was a huge DC Comics fan and furthermore a huge Arrow fan and Flash fan but I don't know uh, they Stephen Amell really went out of his way to make sure that they were taken care of and at this Comic Con or was it Comic Con in Austin or something like yeah, that Yeah it was a com- it was some sort of con Right and uh so they got front row seats and they wore this t-shirt or he wore this t-shirt that they brought and he dedicated the the panel to them and uh the next day they went back and David Ramsey like she like jumped in David Ramsey's arms and John Barrowman jumped in David Ramsey's arms because John <laughs> Barrowman, you know, is woo. You know? Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. But what kind of turned me off on this in the very end, if I can be really honest, is that she posted a video at the very bottom of this article trying to raise awareness for the condition that her, her son died from, which is great, I think. Mm-hmm. But she was also like, well, the next thing I'm trying to do is either meet Grant Gustin or meets and I was like, okay, great. Like, so you're you're using this as like, you know, and it's kind of it's fucked up to say that, and I'm sorry, but she really kind of is, yeah, like using that as a ploy well, to meet these people, which is like, it's a, I don't know, that just kinda, it kind of made like left a sour taste in my mouth. Like after all that, like it could have just been like, I, you know, you you did what you did, you don't so have happy. to go on, yeah. And, and like meet Grant Gustin too. I mean, or like post that in the video, in the same video at least. It was like Ultimately, this, this just shows what good guys all those people are. Yeah, it shows what good guys those people are. But I, I mean, hopefully that I don't know. I just it just left me feeling really weird after watching that. So let's talk about this. Disney Cruise Line has announced today that Star Wars. Well, I say today, but this is a couple days ago. That Star Wars Day at Sea, a special celebration of all things Star Wars, is a a day long event aboard eight special sailings on the Disney Fantasy in the Western Caribbean. Oh, man. Making this the first appearance of the heroes and villains of Star Wars aboard a Disney Cruise Line ship. I just feel like, I, I'm sorry, and I'm a Star Wars fan, but I feel like this is going overboard. <laughs> this is a little this too is, far. No, it, and li- it's no pun intended, going overboard, you know? But I feel like, uh, okay, so they're they're tearing apart a huge portion of Disney's uh, Hollywood Studios, or, which was formerly MGM Studios in Florida, uh-huh. to make a Star Wars area for that. Uh, I mean, uh, to make a Star Wars area in that park. And I just feel like, why don't they just make a park that's exclusively All Star, Wars. Star Wars? Like, why? It's, it kind of yeah. like, it kind of like takes away from the Disney factor. Because Disney is not Star Wars. And like, let's stop fucking okay, pretending. Okay, I'm a diehard Star Wars fan. But I feel like, I feel like they probably are going in a smarter direction. Which is incorporating bits of Star Wars into their existing why is that? mechanisms. Just because, I mean, okay, Star Wars has a lot of fans... But is a Star Wars theme park really going to be able to generate enough revenue? I really think it would. If they made it, if it they needs made to it be dope enough, really badass well, for I'm, it to be yeah. only Star Wars in this theme park. I mean, come on though. Like, there's enough of a fan base for Star Wars, and people. I think everyone knows about Star Wars. Yeah, you know? yeah. It would just be another reason for them to. And I mean, the way that they're taking the franchise, it's like they're going to ma- be making all of these movies. They've got like what four movies slated already? Five movies, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, and. Uh, it, I mean, doesn't it make sense to just capitalize off of that? Or maybe maybe what they're doing right now is just incorporating it there, and then they're already planning to build a park. They have maybe. God knows they have enough room out there. They've got like they've got 
miles upon miles of, or acres upon acres of unused land. Yeah. It's insane. Ultimately, I mean, it's safe to say Disney probably knows what they're doing, and they've probably made the smart decision in terms of what... I mean, like... it's, but do they? Because there were, <laughs> there were years where Disney wasn't making any fucking money at all. Yeah. Like, I'm, well, they were making money, but not like the money that they've been making recently. Yeah. And they've just made these crazy acquisitions, so it's like, okay... I feel like it's a smarter idea to incorporate Marvel into the parks and do Star Wars is kind of a bigger entity. Like I don't I mean I don't know. Well, I, am I wrong? It's, or maybe they could do both in one park, do one side as Star Wars and the other one as Marvel. I feel and like okay. cross over from one to the other or something so like that. So like to to echo on what you said, you like everyone knows Star Wars but not everyone loves Star Wars and but you'd still be down to at least go to the park once and check it out. Especially if people are talking about it and they're like... Me, an I'd experience. be down to fucking... You know, I'd be all up in that. Okay, but, but I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I'll yeah. say that. I'd li- I, it's, I like Star Wars. I'm like, it's all good. But I would be down to go check out the park at least once just because someone tells me, oh, it's great. You've yeah. got to experience this. Like, what about... Think about an Harry Potter land, which is a huge thing in, in Florida, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not that big of a Harry Potter fan, but I would like to go check that out because people say that it's kick-ass. Yeah. I and can... I've been to that park before. It's really dope. Like, they give Disney a run for their money out there. Florida or Orlando is a theme park city now at this point. It's pretty much, like, verifiable. Yeah, that's true. Oh, great. Now we're talking about, we're doing some countdown lists. Let's talk about this. Cameron Diaz was never in an actual porn. Okay, so these are ten actors or actresses who started out as porn stars. She was never in an actual porn. Nineteen-year-old Diaz plays naked girl in a naughty photo shoot and video. She was never. That's not porn. N- uh, they they include softcore porn in here. Okay, but that's not. That's still not. She's not. She's no not getting sexu- penetrated. There's no sexual act there. Before joining Friends, Matt LeBlanc starred in the erotic series Red Shoe Diaries. Not really porn. He seduces well, that's softcore, that is softcore then later porn. has sex with her in an elevator. And there's, like, no clips from the actual, No, like... they're not about to show the clips. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe in 1949 was a nude... Uh, she did a nude photo shoot for just $50. That's cheap, sir. <laughs> oh, my Four God. Four years later, it appeared in the centerfold of Playboy. Which helps both her and Playboy become icons. Sasha Gray, of course she did porn. Oh, yeah, I mean... Sasha Gray is one of the most... Oh, the girlfriend experience, yes. <laughs> she's one of the most uh, hardcore porn actresses of all time. Yeah. And she's she's awesome. But, I really think that... Uh, David Duchovny. I mean, if you've ever seen Californication, it's basically porn. X-Files uh, Mulder starred in the softcore TV show Red Shoe Diaries. He was also in Red Shoe Diaries. Yeah. In 2000, what does that say? 2008, which is, a, it was really weird. That eight looked bizarre. Yeah. John, John Hamm. Hamm. really? Madman's John Hamm dressed porn sets before he played Don Draper. He dressed porn sets. Yeah, that was a poor choice of words. For $200 a day, he worked on Skinamax. Wow. Which is also, I'm pretty and sure, now he where... makes $260,000 an episode for Mad I'm Men. I'm pretty sure that's where Red Shoe Diaries also was. Cinemax. Uh, this is Sylvester Stallone? Was that who that was? Yeah, Sylvester Stallone. s and loving stud for $200. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. None of these are really... The only hardcore porn actor here was, uh, fucking Sasha Gray. Well, he was a model for a gay magazine, Schwarzenegger. I mean, I believe that. He's, like, you know, yeah. a lot of, I'm sure a lot of dudes in that position would probably do that just for extra cash. Jackie Chan... Really? In Hong that, Kong porno all in the family. It was, interesting. interestingly enough, it was the only role Jackie Chan ever had where there was no fight sequence in the movie. Well, I wish that there <laughs> kind of was one, though. Helen Mirren is the last one. Uh, you know, from, like, Red and other stuff. I don't know. The porno epic Caligula? <laughs> that doesn't sound like porn, dude. It sounds like... I mean, it was porn 40 years ago or something, 30 years ago. It was deemed graphic and incestuous. That's why. Are you true that was the top 10 actors who Oh, yes. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, mate. Thank you for that. Your your list was awful, though. It was a good list. We we watched some pretty good lists earlier, which I do recommend. uh, BuzzFeed smoothing. Those weren't really lists, but those were like what... What can you, can you smoothie this or can you 
uh, soda this? Can you ice cream it? Yeah. They're more like abominations that they make Disgusting their in- they things. make their interns like eat this food and whatnot. I think it's I think it's a gold mine, man. I yeah. think it's a great. It's a good idea, idea for YouTube videos, that's for sure. So here's a picture of Uma Thurman, right? And, uh, and there's also a dude on the right with a, with a killer goatee. I'm guessing this was at the Grammys because this uh, photo oh, cropped Jesus, up. Oh, Jesus, what the fuck? That is Uma Thurman, man. Dude, why? What Everyone's like confused. They're like, what, what's wrong with her? <laughs> because if you look at her five, four or five years ago compared to now, like four or five years ago, I thought Uma, Uma Thurman was a very attractive older woman. It's the bangs, man. Well, it's the bangs and people were noticing the lack of eye makeup as well. But it looks oh, like she's yeah. had some sort of Plastic Botox surgery. or something. Yeah, that's bizarre. It, it looks terrible. And she was so, like, oh, she was a really look, fucking hot older woman dude, five years it ago. it does not look terrible. She looks more average now, more I, than anything yeah, I Yeah, I guess. But... She, looks, she looks shocking. She looks, but she does have kind of like a weird, a stranger look, you yeah. know? But it's not bad. Oh, it unsettles me. It, it just doesn't look like Uma Thurman. That's yeah, why it's unsettling. I guess so. I guess so. I love how we see, like, the box fly in and out of the screen. You guys don't see that, but... <laughs> no, they never see that. Oh, my God, I can't believe we're about to talk about this. This is some ridiculous shit, man. What is it? Oh, God. What's going on? All right, all right. Here we go. <laughs> is that Helena Bonham Carter? That's Helena Bonham Carter with a trout. So, isn't get it? this. Helena she, Bonham Carter has a phobia of fish, but she doesn't want us taking too many of them out with the ocean so here's a picture of her posing naked with a giant tuna oh it's a tuna for a woman who readily admits to being afraid of fish a giant tuna seems to be the most unlikely of valentine's dates um i i i'm I, i'm like s- extremely attracted to helena bonham carter i think it's like in a, in a really weird way she's all she plays like really weird roles and like yeah but she is like she's an amazing actress she is man. immensely talented yeah like the uh, have you watched the video of her singing okay so she was she played sally in uh nightmare before christmas uh-huh and she does uh she sings with danny elfman at like live in this yeah. live performance it is unbelievable she is amazing man so this this picture it was uh, in support of the Blue Marine Foundation, which is campaigning for marine reserves to protect endangered species around the world. Uh, apparently, she was convinced to undertake the project by her friend. Uh, but ultimately, these pictures are disgusting. <laughs> I don't understand what this is going to do. Like, this doesn't I'm advocate turn- for anything. I'm turned on. <laughs> It, it, it advocates. You find for it sexy. My erection. Oh, great! You know what? Actually, you, I, this I, is like t- a total confused boner right here. Actually, that's where I saw it for the first time on R slash confused. This, boners. yeah. Oh, of course it would be. Yeah, you know I frequent all those weird ones. Well, and people are all over Reddit are fucking getting turned on by this woman and her fish. <laughs> the woman and her fish. What does that even mean? <laughs> So okay, wait. I think I may have been wrong. I'm not sure if. Uh, yeah. Okay. I I was I was incorrect. Totally incorrect. Uh, Helena Bonham Carter did not play Sally. Great job, dude. Catherine O'Hara played Sally, who was the mother from Home Alone. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, she was the mother. That's crazy. I didn't know but that. But Helena, she, she was married to Tim Burton. I don't know if she was married to him at that time. Really? This was, in, this was made in 1990. That wasn't that long ago. That was really 25 long. years ago. That was really I wasn't but, uh, even born in 1990. It was 25 years ago. Yeah, but, so, but, okay, but I was right about her singing Sally's song. And if you want to look that up on YouTube, just look up Helena Bonham Carter's Sally's song. It's amazing. Oh, Sally Brown boy. No, no. What? Down to Trinidad to see Sally Brown boy. Oh, it's a sea shanty, dude. Aren't you familiar with sea shanties? You don't like sea shanties. Oh, God. Come on, man. All right, let's watch this preview. Uh, this is a trailer. Did you ever see the first Hitman movie with Timothy Oliphant? Is Zachary Kinto in this one? Yes. He's Hitman. I guess. He's, he's Agent... Agent. It doesn't look like him. Agent 47. Agent 47. I, okay, so the the first movie with Timothy Oliphant, I really, really enjoyed that movie uh, for its entertainment value alone. Like the, I never watched it. The that. writing wasn't very strong, and the, act, the acting was fairly strong, but... I like Over, Timothy Olyphant. Overall, it got a bad rating and like bad reviews, but I enjoyed the movie. Now they're making another Agent Forty Seven. Well, this is something that I talked about the like last night. I was having a couple beers and I talked to this dude, and we were, and we talked about uh, we were talking about Vin Diesel. 
<laughs> and we were like, uh, you know, he was like, yeah, I like some of his movies, you know. And I was like, they all get rated like shit by critics, I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah. most of them do. Well, the, like the Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, but they're entertaining. Yeah. And they I'm, they get like decent uh, public scores, if that makes sense. Like viewer so, scores, rather. Uh, this is the trailer for the new Hitman movie. They haven't said, marked this as a film that's going to be like going down the drain either, so. Honestly, this trailer doesn't look as good as the first movie, but okay, we'll see. Wow, his head looks weird. Yeah, and the tattoo looked like shit. Why don't we start with your name? Zachary Kindo. <laughs> Spock. That's not a name. No. But it is mine. What exactly? Is that even him? Like, why would this guy bring his gun into the And he's like, and room? pointed at him. With a bullet! With live ammunition! Whoa, dude, that doesn't look like him at all. That looks like Orlando Bloom. Oh, that's Orlando Bloom, dude. <laughs> it's not... Is that really Zachary Kinto? I, I don't know. No, that's Zachary Kinto. Maybe he's hunting him. Yeah, it's definitely Orlando Bloom. Yeah. Wait, is it really Orlando Bloom? No. The guy playing Agent 47, his name is Rupert Friend. Never heard of him. Rupert Frenemy? He was in Pride and Prejudice, Homeland, The Young Victoria. So wait, this is more about them trying to hunt this guy down. Well, that's kind of, that's what it was in the... the other one, the original one too. But why? I thought that you were supposed to be like hit the hitman getting away from everyone. You yeah, know? like you're supposed to have that perspective. Well, I think they keep trying to tell the story of like. Hitman. Wait, 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 he's about to tackle him. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh, god. I want to see this. Tackle him. Oh, oh yeah, onto oh. a train, dude. Man, this looks action packed. I'm pretty down. I'll go see it. Yeah, I would be down to watch this. It's gonna get. You should watch the first hitman, man. You can tell it's going to get terrible critic reviews already, though. They're gonna. They're gonna be like, "What's up with okay? What's I'm, up with that guy's tattoo?" Huh? I'm gonna make a prediction right now. This scores worse than the first Hitman movie. You think so? I, I'll make that prediction right now. I say it'll score better. You think so? Just for the sake of competition. Okay, okay. I'm down with that. So yesterday, I I, there's gonna be a Friends movie though. That's so. That seems like that's like the most unnecessary thing ever. We talked. I like touched on it on the last podcast. I was like, "Can we talk?" You were like, "No, God damn no, it. God damn it, no." <laughs> um, uh, I saw a movie. I went to the theaters yesterday. Oh, and did saw you? something. I saw Project Almanac. Uh, we talked about it last uh, week. What did you? What would tell me about it? Okay, people were saying that this is going to be like the biggest flop of 2015. It got like forty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Why? So you paid to go watch this movie? Yeah, because there was nothing else. Was man. it worth the money? Yeah, it was really? good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It like, okay. So it's the a Wachowski last... starship film. No, no, yes. no, no, no. That's that's Jupiter ascending. Dude. Oh, get your shit together. <laughs> Wait, what, what is Project Almanac? Oh, Wait, that's about the time what... travel one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that that looked good. It did. It did sorry, score like sorry. forty forty percent. Though I thought that you were talking about Jupiter ascending. No. Oh, man, no. I wish that you would have watched that <laughs> no, one. No, I'm so glad I saw oh, this one instead God. because it was a really cool movie, man. So it was made by, like, the same people that did Project X, right? No, that did Chronicle, which oh, you right, haven't right, seen. Right. Okay. I also recommend Chronicle. It's a really good movie. So this movie was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it, man. The, the last 30 minutes or so dragged on a little bit, but it wasn't enough to, like, deter me. I enjoyed it. I feel like the movie is exactly what you think it's going to be about. Though. Exactly. Like, yeah. there's really not... The previews don't really leave very much up to, up to like, mystery or whatever, you know? It, well, okay, the coolest parts about this, Interpretation, this right? type of movie and, like, Chronicle, which came before it, is the cinematography, which is not... It's not average or run-of-the-mill by any means because it's supposed to be filmed, like, from the perspective of a handheld camera... The whole movie is? Yeah, but it's, what? it's really good, man. That's what I'm saying. If you haven't seen... It's very, it's very like... Uh, what, what, Joss, did Joss Whedon do that? Or was it... It's, uh... it's hard to explain because if you haven't seen Chronicle, this is exact, like 
Chronicle was the first movie. Though. Yeah, Cloverfield we talked about before, but I and, feel like Chronicle does it right because Cloverfield is like someone who's really scared is holding the camera, you know? Yeah. Like some shit is going down. The world is changing and this person's holding the camera. Whereas uh, the person holding the camera in uh, in Project Almanac is more of like someone who's filming a documentary, I guess you could say. But like, imagine imagine a low budget documentary. That's the type of cinematography, but really, it's sensationalized. It looks good. Well, I mean, okay, wait, wait, wait. But what about that movie? Like, what was it? Eight millimeter. I have no idea what that is. Hold up, I'm not. I don't remember the name. I'm, I got I'll tell you. But uh, either Spielberg way, was a producer. Uh, uh Super Eight. Is that what you're Super talking? Eight? Yeah, that's yeah. eight millimeter. What the fuck am I talking about? I have no idea. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> yes, yeah, no, yeah. Super Eight though. That was kind of a movie that was like based. This on movie that is better than Super Eight. Really? Uh, I like Super. 8. I like Super Eight too, but it's. I feel like Chronicle and uh, Project Almanac are are like better versions what of was, Super. What 8. was Super Eight even about? I forgot. Those kids like some okay, was it like some shit goes powers down, or something like that. The trains collide or something. Right. Like if the train gets ripped apart, and I these kids that. are like, "Oh, let's go look at it." No, because they're making a movie right there. They're, yeah. Like they're with a Super Eight camera. Yeah. And then they ca- like they catch that on film. Mm-hmm. And, and then they, they start documenting it and like asking questions, like what the hell is going on? Yeah. And it was like a huge government thing or something like that. I don't know. Honestly, or man. Was there like did the kids have like psychic powers? Project or? Almanac is way better than. That. It's a good movie. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I you, but it might not be for everyone though. Uh, I mean, okay. So I went with my mom, and my mom does not watch like movies that are not like. Wait, you showed her Guardians of the Galaxy recently, and what did she say about that? She thought her she her cute. reaction was it's cute. It was cute, and that's why it, I thought it would be a good place to start her on, rather than trying to be like, let's watch. Captain America Winter Soldier or something or yeah, it, well yeah you know Captain America Winter Soldier is like kind of a if you're if you're not like into the characters it's hard to get through well and if you don't know what they're talking about like it, I just think even in Guardians Barnes of the Galaxy fucking, uh, when like Ronan's like I am from the Kree Empire like my mom has no idea what the fucking Kree Empire is well, neither do I really what I don't really oh, know God. you hate really. Marvel though I don't hate Marvel <laughs> I'm just not like a I, okay, Dude, so the like, Kree Empire is fucking badass, man. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not... And then, okay, the Winter Soldier, how they portrayed Bucky Barnes the whole time was yeah. like... Eh, it was like completely unnecessary, like... Yeah, uh, I feel like the next Captain America is one of the America lesser story so arcs better. in Captain America, in my opinion. So. Um, before Project Almanac, they played an Age of Ultron trailer, and I, I got chills. You got... What? Is it the oh, one man. with like with with the Pinocchio song? Yeah. Yeah. And you got chills from that. In theory, I, that's the first time I've seen it like on a big screen. When I, okay, when I I got downvoted to Oblivion when I I posted this, but I was like, yeah, that's really great. Disney cross promoting the the fucking Pinocchio song in the Marvel like uh-huh. it's, it just seems unnecessary to me. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, but some people loved it. it. Fits, some people were like, dude. yes, that's awesome. Well, it fits with like what's going on with Ultron, you know. Ultron. <laughs> okay, I like Brainiac a lot more than Ultron, but I I'm able to view them as separate characters. I think because Ultron they looks are. silly, but he he is kind of no, he looks silly. He is kind of silly, dude. He's really? like a little. He's <laughs> I have no like he talks funny and he's like he's kind of derpy, but he's still he's still a sinister AI with plans to you know destroy the universe and the world. So. Brainiac, if you if you put Brainiac against Ultron, like if they were to Brainiac battle wins. each other, why? Because Brainiac's an alien. Because Brainiac is tested in battle. Brainiac has conquered civilizations, you know, like like thousands of them. Yeah, yeah. like he's systematically able to conquer civilizations. And, Brainiac, I mean, you... but isn't but Ultron's not able to do that? I mean, he could be, but. It's not like what he was programmed for. Brainiac didn't. What was he programmed for? I don't really know very much about this. Uh, okay, so, I, I know, know Tony Stark in this storyline is made Brainiac, which is uh, or not. We Brainiac, talked about sorry, this with Ultron. My bad. Yeah, we Crossing. talked about this a little bit with Diana. Uh, Diana. That's what I said, Diana. Okay. About uh, why? Why are they portraying uh, Tony Stark as the inventor of Ultron when it's really Ant Man who invented Ultron? You know. It but, was Hank Pym, right? Yeah, we'll go on. I, I don't know, man. I'm really excited. For I, we don't. I don't think we know very much about what's going to happen in this movie, in the cinematic universe as yeah, a whole. Yeah, because it's it's it could differ from the storyline in the comics. Yeah. So I don't know, but uh, but Marvel now has access to Spider Man, so we'll probably see Spider Man in Civil War. Yeah. 
which will be good. Because, I mean, if only they had Wolverine in Civil War 2, though. Oh, really? Man. So Wolverine what? plays a huge part in Civil War, man. Yeah, that would be good. We're, we'll we'll talk about the Spider-Man thing right now, but we got one more trailer to watch. Oh, okay. Oh, is this San Andreas? No. I, the trailer for that looks badass. With The Rock? What is this? Straight out of Compton? Music, all our frustration and anger. Yeah. Our music was like is that what it's called, really? Most this looks awesome, man. Is it a is it fictional? It's a it's like a redramatization of the NWA story. Oh really? This is just part of the trailer. This isn't at the actual movie. Those guys are literally wearing the, the DJ was wearing Beats by Dre. So it's kind of a documentary? No. This is just the trailer. Watch, you'll see right now. There's actors who are playing, you know, Easy and Ice Cube and The police. Oh, that's just like the the part before the trailer. Yeah. Kind of unnecessary, but okay. <laughs> Why did they have to show some dude DJing with Beats by Dre? Who is this going to be directed by, do you know? Needs to hear it. Let me find out. Alright, let's hit this shit. Alright, alright, alright. Spinning records ain't paying none of the bills around here. What you talking about? Spinning records pays a lot of the bills these days. You think that makes you rich? It's a start. Hey Q, what's your poem now? The flyers won, you know nigga. F. Gary Gray. What, who, what else has he directed? Uh, Italian Job, Friday. <laughs> I have those headphones. This is actually this. This looks. I'll I'll watch this. Paul Giamatti. Fuck yeah, I'll watch this man. This is probably gonna be pretty good, but hopefully it's not like. She's naked. <laughs> the lady was naked. Your songs, they glamorize gangs and drugs. Our art is a reflection of our reality. Hopefully they don't, like, over-sensationalize this shit and make it into something that it's not, though. Yeah. This is a threat, guys. From what I've seen of this trailer, though, it looks good. I feel like this movie should have been made by Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really good. That would have been amazing. Like, I, you know. This could still be really good, though. I mean. I'm down to go see a, this. This is, a, this is a good story. You yeah. Know? Hell yeah. Like, N.W.A. was one of the biggest acts in hip-hop, period. And all of those guys still, well, pretty much all of them still have careers these days. Yeah. Except for ETE, man. But I, but, I mean, I don't know about, like, I don't know about those dudes, like, them, the guys from NWA, like, carrying guns. Like, if they try to make them into, like, something that they're not, I'm going to be upset, you know? Yeah. They're going, it's Hollywood. They're going to sensationalize the story. It's going to be, oh, God, I just moved a fucking tab. I didn't mean to. Oh, oh was this the Spider-Man topic? Oh, God, I don't know what I moved. What did I move? Oh, no. You oh, fucked up. Oh, no. Oh, man. So, let's talk... Let's talk... Okay, we can talk about Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So, we, we've we mentioned the rumors, you know, that Spider-Man was going to be... Uh, Sony was in talks with Marvel to incorporate Spider-Man into the actual Marvel Cinematic Universe, rather than their own little corner of it over at Sony. And it's finally official. I'm ready. <laughs> That's all I can say. I mean... Uh, so people, a lot of people are talking about how they want Ultimate Spider-Man. <sighs> I hope that that is not the case. I want Peter fucking Parker. Yeah, me too. I don't want, uh, dude. And they were they were saying like on a, I sent it to you. 
or actually, I posted this on the Macrocast page, mm -hmm. but uh, people were like, stop asking for Ultimate Spider-Man, because if you do keep asking for it, this is what you're going to get. And it was a photo of Jaden Smith as Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, no. Please, God, no. No, no, Please, no. no. Yeah. I no, mean, no, no, we no, need, no. We need Peter Parker, like, done right. Now they're all under the same roof. Like, Marvel's been kicking ass with, with all the other shit that they've been doing. I would love to see Spider-Man and those villains, like, come into play. So it's, it's rumored that we are pr probably going to see him in Infinity Wars. Which would only make sense, dude. Wait, but we're, we're not we're, – we need to see him. We're not going to see him in Civil War? In Captain America? Yeah. yeah, I think that was the other movie that we're talking about. And then there's going to be a Spider-Man feature. Like, there's, they, With a new actor, well, Spider-Man. I hope they we get absolutely it right. I hope don't, they get the casting We right. absolutely don't need another origin story for Spider-Man, no. though. Like, we've already got that shit, you know? Let's and, I mean, it. okay, no more Tobey Maguire. Like, okay, he was no, why would, wait, He what? was 30 years old when How he played Peter mean, Parker. Like, the first, I don't know, man. I don't know what the fuck Do you really think do. they would bring Peter Parker or Tobey <laughs> fucking Maguire back? I don't trust what they do with Spider-Man, so I wouldn't be surprised if somehow Tobey Maguire came back. I mean, but Disney's behind this <laughs> And now. he's like a 50-year-old Peter Parker. Like, no, oh no, no, no. Dis Disney Marvel is back. I, it would be okay. Andrew for me. Garfield was good. But, I, but no, we don't need him in Spider-Man. I feel like they need to recast. I, sure. I agree. But what if, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing those guys cameo in the film. Like, not as Spider-Man, but as, like, Someone a comic else. book shop owner or some shit. I don't know. Uh, I, and I, also, It's I not going to make it or break it for me. No, it's not, it would just be funny. Like, yeah. But I really don't need to see... Um, Stan Lee in the movie. I'm, no, he has to be, man. What, okay, what's he is in every Marvel movie. What's going to happen when he dies? It's going to be like it's everyone's going, be going to freak the fuck out, dude. He's like 95 years old now. Yeah, it's sad. Like, I need to wean myself off of Stan Lee. Actually, you know what? That's not... I no, want, I, dude, I, I we want, want as much of him as yeah, possible. Yeah, I agree with you, but it's just... it's. It, I'm already, like, sad about it. Have you watched the documentary that's on uh, Netflix? About Stan Lee? It's about Marvel Comics and uh, Stan Lee, I think. No, I don't care. Oh, God. I mean, I, just because of the fact that they stole a lot of their ideas from DC. That's not... You can't even argue that. I, I don't argue that, but I do feel like some of the ideas which they stole ended up resulting in... Much bigger franchises. No, no not just that. Like not just bigger or not just more popular, but it ended up resulting in these characters that were... Although they shared similarities, they were inherently different in many ways, in ways that were centric to Marvel. Yeah, like and then, Captain America is Superman. Is uh, he? Is that okay? Because those are really different characters. I wouldn't even assume they were sim they're supposed spawned to, from they're, the same idea. Similar. I mean, but and Bucky Barnes is supposed to be Robin. Remember, we talked about this. Uh, yeah, but uh, that doesn't even make sense to me. Iron Man, Bruce Wayne. Mm. They're different. They are. They I, are distinguishably when, different. Iron Man is his own entity, but I don't. And I like it. When I mean, I'm talking good. about, I'm just not a huge fan. I can't get into it. I don't know. When I'm talking about characters that they like stole, I'm saying like, okay, so the Flash comes right, Quicksilver, and, and then they're like, okay, we need to make Quicksilver. But Quicksilver is different enough from the Flash that it does not bother me one bit. How? How is he different? What do you mean? He's totally. He's. Okay, A, he's the son of Magneto. He's the son of, like, one of the most villainous people Oh Yeah, in Marvel. all right, all right. And his, uh, like, the speed force is not a thing. It's not like they were like, all right, let's copy him exactly, well, they, they, let's they, add the speed force. They have force. mutants. They have mutants in, in, uh, in, I mean, and there's metahumans, though, in DC. But, but they're like... But they utilize, the, they do utilize the speed force. They're just not, like inherently fast from birth or whatever like like the way that they are wait you're marvel. saying the marvel characters and ha use the speed force no no uh -oh. no i'm saying the the dc characters do yeah well the, only the flashes actually and uh that other characters that from like beyond the realm or whatever yeah i don't yeah there's a difference you know but i don't know there's just i, I feel like what, what kind of ticks me off is like okay Marvel came after DC, and yeah. and I mean there there are only so many original ideas. So yeah, it makes sense that they would have like similar characters because how many like it's hard to come up with new superhuman ideas. I will give it to Marvel that they came up with like Spider Man. DC has nothing like that. Yeah, uh, Spider Man is dope. But, but what I'm what I was trying to say is like even though Marvel may have drawn off those DC characters, they may have been you know the starting point for Marvel characters. I feel like they've changed them enough, and they're they're their own thing. They're they represent something entirely separate from the DC thing, even though they stole the idea. That's just how I feel. They about do it. well. I, yeah, you're right. I, I mean, mean, 
it's not really theft of an idea either. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's it is. They are significantly different, although they, they have this. They have similarities. I, don't I mean, know, it's Marvel the flavor like, of the month type thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Marvel is much more friendly, like you know, like commercially. I feel. Well, it's more know. even though Batman and Superman are the most well known superheroes in the world. If you want to hear my criticism about Marvel as compared to DC, is that most of the characters in Marvel feel a lot more shallow than the DC characters, and I'll, I'll always feel that way because when you when you look at someone like, uh, say Iron Man and Bruce Wayne, when you look at Iron Man, he's so singular in what he does. Like even in Avengers, we see very little of that where he shows like how much he cares about people and all that. But he is a very very one-dimensional character. He doesn't have as nearly as many complexities as someone like Batman. Yeah, Bruce is all over the place. And I feel Bruce like that translates shit, across totally, the whole thing. Bruce is totally, um, like, uh, he's a loner. Yeah. You know, where Iron Man is a playboy. Yeah. And I, even though Bruce is also a playboy, but but inside he's got all that darkness. I don't, yeah, their characters are much more fleshed out. Uh, but maybe it's because they've had more time to do it. Also, Marvel keeps like revamping their storylines. All like they're all over the fucking place. Yeah, I'll agree with you with that. Especially since they just relaunched, you know, the continuity on their entire comic book universe, and they don't have anything in place like the multiverse in DC. Like DC has their shit together as far as that goes. The lore is so fleshed out on DC; it's unreal. Like it's similar to the lore of like. Tolkien and Lord of the Rings, you know? Or Star Wars, even. Or Star Wars, man. Star Wars is up there, and so is Star Trek, even. You know? I think that Marvel could get there, but they need to find a way to tie everything together. But they, uh, honestly, it's just going to be another copy of DC. Like, they'll have to do another... Like... They're like, okay, here's the thing. There's 53 Earths. <laughs> <laughs> People travel between... Well, while we're talking about uh, superheroes and so... DC... Emily Kinney. Oh uh, no, dude, that's awesome, man! From The Walking Dead. Uh, she, well, so form- that's why she's off The Walking Dead. No now? Spo- uh, spoiler alert. Formerly of The Walking Dead, is joining the cast of The Flash as Bug Eyed Bandit. I'm down with that. So Bug Eyed Bandit. I asked you about this before the show. He's not a character I'm super familiar with. I'm not either. Um, it, it's originally a man in the comics, Bertram Larvin. Uh, an interior. Larvin. He was an inventor. Who <laughs> the des- names are great. <laughs> he was an inventor who designed a mechanical insect to control insect pests. Uh, unfortunately, he had no financial backing to support his invention. He resolved to stealing money, and later used his inventions to steal more money. He became a criminal. Which is, I mean, they could take a really interesting turn with this character, make him make her a lot more like villainous. I yeah. don't know. Instead of just like, because I thief. feel like a lot of the Flash and Adam villains are like really like. <laughs> Like, you know, like, like Captain Colt, like the rogues are not really that serious, like to be taken that seriously. Apparently the uh, Bug-Eyed Bandit is an Atom villain. Yeah. So they've also teased that the Atom is going to be on Flash yeah, well, that's, in a couple I weeks. I mean, obviously that makes instead sense. Instead of Arrow. That only, make, that only makes sense. They, they said that the Atom is going to have his own TV show eventually too. Oh, uh, okay. Did like, they really? Yeah. They, well, Can we get a been, confirmation they, on that? There's no confirmation, but they've been teasing it, I think. Okay. Yeah. Which I would like to see too. I mean... If well, they, you know my thoughts the... on that. I don't think we really need an Adam TV show Why? right now. Because... I, I, I w- maybe they could bring in, like, Captain Adam, too. That would be cool. Or, like, I mean, I, I just feel like Captain these... Adam? Yeah. Who's... Oh, oh, yes. The one who absorbs nuclear blasts. Yeah. Yes. He's I feel fucking like, awesome. I feel like it's a good way... Like, having these other shows is, like, a stepping stone to opening up more characters. Like, look at the way that they're doing Black Canary now. It's fucking awesome. Like, I... Well, you saw the most recent episode of Flash, right? Of Flash, yes. So you know Cla- Clancy Brown, right? Yeah, uh, he's like he's, he's like General Wade Eiling, and he's also Lex Luthor, which he is, is like so he's many the people voice in the Lex DC Lu- universe. Yeah, which is great. I like that. It, I, his, the first role I ever saw him in was Starship Troopers. Yeah, he was good in that. Yeah. I saw him in Carnival. Yeah, he was good in that show. He's he's a good actor, man. He, yeah, he's really solid. Really underappreciated, I feel. So I'm not going to give away too much, but in the last episode of Flash, there was like a nuclear blast and. I think it's, like, General Eiling's team who's, like, looking into it. But what if one of his team, like, uh, some special... I'm, I'm not too sure on Captain Adam's backstory, so I don't... This isn't for sure, but what if, like, one of his team somehow, you know, gets involved with this and ends up becoming Captain Adam? That could be really cool. Yeah. I don't know. It could be a, It could be a cool way into, into making that happen. Um, okay, wait. And so was it pretty much... You were you have been talking about how John Diggle is 
Green Lantern? No, I never. People, did some other, some other people were saying that, weren't they? It's a theory. It's a big theory roaming that... around, and especially since I think the Arrow fucking pe- the people from Arrow are messing with us because they they'll neither like deny or confirm it. But okay. Obviously, there's no way he's going to be Green Lantern. I mean, it, it, I don't think that it's possible, but I've it's been fun thinking to about play it. With. It would be kind of cool. It's fun to think about, but I, How, I guarantee you, say, you right like, now, he will not be Green Lantern. He, he was born as Stuart and changed his name to Diggle. Is that what you said? No. Nah, uh, well, everyone's saying, like, he Diggle isn't his real name. And that, okay, so John Stewart, right? He was a Marine, mm-hmm. and he had, and then he ended up becoming Green Lantern, but he never had anything to do with uh, Arrow. Green Arrow until the, the Justice League. Right. So It doesn't really make it sense. It doesn't make sense, and I don't think this is going to happen. Especially since, think of the CGI and the effects that it would require to add Green Lantern to the show. Dude, I think... Okay, I'm sorry, and a lot of people have been giving Flash and Arrow flack, but I think their special effects are on par. I think They're, they're awesome. probably the best on Fi- TV. Firestorm looks great. I think the, the reason why people hate it is because when you compare it to the multi-million dollar special effects that go into an actual movie... As compared to a TV show, it know, is I still hard think to it's do. Pretty fucking good, man. No, I think it's I think it's probably the best special effects on TV. I agree. But I think those guys, the the team who does those special effects, does both Flash and Arrow and other TV shows. I feel like they could they could do justice for Green Lantern. Yeah. I really do feel like they could. I feel like it would be dope if John Diggle knew John Stewart. Like, yeah, they were both Marines. Like, you know, <laughs> That'd be cool like, too. They were in like the same platoon or something like that. Like that would be kind of interesting. I feel like if they try to introduce Green Lantern onto Arrow, it's just gonna fuck things. Well, if up okay, too wait. Much. If they try to introduce Green Lantern into anything, okay. So they were doing. They were, Flash was doing uh, those speed tests out on Ferris Air, mm-hmm. which is Star Sapphire. Yeah, like, at Carol Ferris. So they would have to incorporate Hal, or like it would have to be Hal. Hal, Hal is just a test pilot, maybe. Yeah, but it would have to be Hal before John Stewart, man. I would I wouldn't be opposed to it if the way if they did this the way they started with Flash, which was, you know, Flash made a small appearance on Arrow and then it led up to him having his own pilot and his own show. I I don't think that them trying to do a whole episode about John Stewart or any other Green Lantern for that matter is going to do anything except hurt the show. No, they have to introduce him like subtly. Yeah. Like they, it has to be like like oh, and this is this is Hal. He's just a pilot. It's whatever. And then you like you, I don't know. You learn like more you, about these characters. You know, like you were saying, I think it would be even smarter to introduce Carol Ferris first, and then from there introduce Hal Jordan. Totally. Yeah, I agree with that. And then I mean, then you can build up into the whole Green Lantern lore. Like at the end of one episode, he gets the ring or something, and then they start. Then it's like coming next season, yeah. Green Lantern, the show or whatever. We're like fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. I would freak out, man. So, let's talk I, about this. I'm excited to see how like her as a as, as a villain Bergen, though. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and like I was saying though, um, they actually have like genetically engineered cockroaches or whatever that that are like robot controlled or mind controlled, mm-hmm. and they can they can influence other cockroaches to do things. Mm-hmm. Like, what if she could do that and she you know uses the cockroaches to her own or bugs to her own means and like gets them to consume people or like. You know, if she's, like, really, yeah. really crazy, that would be dope. Yeah, that would be dope. Hopefully it's not just, like, I use my bugs to <laughs> steal money from Walgreens. So, Netflix had a little bit of a snafu this week. Uh, oh, yeah. Season 3 of House of Cards, which isn't supposed to be available until February 27th. The first 10 episodes were accidentally loaded onto Netflix Instant Watch. <laughs> yeah, but no, no like... People watched Very them. few people got to see them, though, I feel. Uh, I avoided, actively avoided, avoided a discussion on Reddit about them because people had seen them and they Spoilers. were talking about them. Yeah. Uh, no, don't worry. I'm not going to say anything because I... We don't as know soon as, about As it. soon as I saw the tiniest hint of it, I was like, nope, 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 nope. No, I mean, out. I'm going to consume all of that show in like two One days. One day. Oh, dude, I'm going to watch it all the, the day it comes out. You're gonna feel I can't like, help myself. Yeah, I can't either. It's oh man, and I I rewatched the last two episodes of season two just to like refresh myself a little bit. And I, you, you I want to watch more. I'm like, God, I should have started from the, the beginning. You and should. What, what, well, what you should have done, yeah, you should have either done that or you should have watched the two episodes directly before you watch the new season. Like that day. Yeah, because that yeah. way it's like, oh, okay. But I'm sure that they're going to have like a five minute synopsis of what happened. Like they, like you know, yeah, they previously. usually do in House of Cards. They're pretty good about that. Now, is Daredevil out yet? No. When is that coming out? 
Uh, I don't know exactly. In like May? Okay, so real quick, just because we were talking about House of Cards, I want to... <laughs> these are so amazing, man. I, uh, we have to look at them. So, this article is called The Best Quotes from Frank Underwood, Pokemon Champion. What? <laughs> Here we go. Everything is about Pokemon battles, except Pokemon battles. Pokemon battles are about power. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and he's like looking at himself in the mirror. <gasps> talking to the, he's just talking to the camera. There are two kinds of Pokemon. The sort of Pokemon that has the deal EV stats in nature, or useless Pokemon. The sort of Pokemon that's not worth a great ball. I have no patience for useless Pokemon. <laughs> that's so dumb. <laughs> you might very well think that I couldn't possibly use my bicycle indoors. <laughs> <laughs> This is ridiculous. I've always loathed the necessity of Pokemon centers. Like death, it puts even the most powerful Pokemon in their balls. <laughs> I love that woman. I love her more than Sharpedo's love rare candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so dumb. The victory road to power is paved with hypocrisy. And, and strength, strength puzzles. puzzles. <laughs> Oh god, this one is so long. Oh, we don't yeah. need to read that one. They're good though. I, uh, hey, look, I have a um, Oh, my game with you is expired on Trivia Crack. I'm sorry. Oh, God. So, I, I, on this topic of, of Frank Underwood, I, I also read some fan fiction recently, uh, Fifty Shades of Modoc. <laughs> <That's, laughs> yeah, you were telling it, us and about you can, it. Yeah, you can find this by just Googling Fifty Shades of Modoc. It uh, basically exchanges the character of Christian Grey from Fifty Shades of Grey with Modoc. <laughs> and, uh, it's it, what you would expect. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much exactly what you would expect. The woman talks about getting licked by a football-sized tongue. Um, Modoc, yeah, that's what Modoc sounds like. <laughs> I wish you should pull it up. I swear, and she's oh, like, man. she's like, uh, the way that he like belittles her is hilarious. Tell you what, we can link to it in the description. Oh, or, of the or show. you can actually just check us out on the Macrocast Facebook page. Okay, you want to post more that information? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've actually already posted it. Oh, you posted it to the Macrocast. Are you sure? Uh, I don't think you did. I think you, I did. You sent it to the group with Diana and Wilbert. That's it. Okay, well then I'll I'll make sure to post it there. But we are much more active on that Facebook page than we were of late. Yeah. So go, go there check and... us out there. It's facebook.com slash the macrocast. Yeah, totally. And that's our show. I'm glad that we just did that plug then right now. Okay. I'm Download. Uh, that's D-O-W-N-L-O-W apostrophe D. You can find more information about me at IamDownload.com or visit me at Facebook, Facebook.com slash official download. Make sure to tweet me if you like what I say. If you hate what I say, then tweet me too. It's at Download here. And Alex will tell you about macro records and how to reach us. Quick question. Did, the, did my camera last all the way? Yes. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm fuck pretty, yeah. Sure you people are seeing me right now. God, this is so amazing. Oh, no, don't zoom in. Don't zoom in. Don't, don't, don't. But, uh, okay, so if you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to go leave us a review on iTunes. It would be most appreciated. Oh, yes. Give us five stars. Tell, us, tell everybody how if great you like the, the show, show is. Yes. And uh, what that does is it, it pushes our show up in the iTunes ratings, and it allows the show to get discovered by more people so we can grow this lovely audience for the Macrocast. It would really help us out. If you want to tweet at the show, use at Macro Records. Uh, we have an at the Macrocast, but... Tweet at mac- macro records is better. Well, we haven't we haven't really set that Twitter yeah or it's flushed that Twitter out yet. It's not worthless. It's fucking worthless. We just haven't we haven't started really using it yet. But yeah, tweet us at macro records. Don't forget to go. Don't forget to go to shop. This is macro dot com. It's our store. And check out uh, our most recent release, which you're going to hear right now. It's One City, I Wish. There you go. And our official website, this is macro.com, is the hub for all things macro records. Our blog, podcast, store. let's plays, store, store. everything we Bean do heard. is right there. So if you want a central hub for looking at our let's plays, watching this podcast, listening to this podcast, that's the place to go. It's got all the good shits there. Bean curd. That's our show. Thanks for listening. What is bean curd anyway? I don't know. See you next I've week. I've been saying it all, the entire episode.
Oh,